Good morning. Would you join us while we sing the processional together? We have come into his house, gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house, gathered in It's important that I get what I'm about to say correct because I don't want to be misquoted. Uh, Grace, my 11-year-old, said to me this morning, Dad, at 10 o'clock last night I was in the toilet doing a poop. The lights flickered and then they went out and I got scared. I looked around to see that man that was going to come and kill me in the toilet, he said, to which I kind of giggled and think if anyone came in that toilet, they would be the one should be concerned. <laughs> she proceeded to struggle and in fact start to cry because she couldn't find the door handle. She ran into her room and uh, considered <clears throat> hiding under her bed because apparently that's where you hide when someone is coming to get you. She decided against it. She slept on her bed with her laptop open as a lamp until such time as the battery had died and she fell asleep. What does this have to do with this morning service? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> But if she asks me, as she always does, Dad, did you mention me in the service this morning? I can truthfully say yes. <laughs> Considering mention, uh, today is Ron White's birthday, and so I address you, sir, this morning, as <coughs> we wish you, as, uh, on behalf of a parish, uh, a blessed considerate and happy birthday this morning. So we're going to sing to you, sir. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ron. Happy birthday to you. Hip, hip. Hooray. Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip hip! Hooray! Ron, happy birthday. Uh, last week I was also celebrating my birthday, which is tomorrow, with my family in Auckland. In my family there are 17 of us who have birthdays in November. So it was a very big cake, and it makes me wonder what happened in March in my family that was so important. <laughs> Well, God, bless us as we uh, worship together, the importance of worshipping together. Uh, may God 
be with us as we prayerfully and through Scripture not only uh, uphold the glory of God, but, but more so uh, God calls us into his presence today. Brendan has told us it's his birthday tomorrow. So could we all sing happy birthday <laughs> to Brendan tomorrow? And I have a cake for you. Happy birthday to you. <coughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Brandon. Happy birthday to you. Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray! And in South Africa we say, Noha Pip. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Ah, didn't think I was ever going to hit the floor this morning after all that. Let's just take a moment to be still in the presence of God. Grace and peace to you from God. Let's God fill you with truth, truth and joy. joy. The Lord be with you. The Lord bless you. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our collect for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we may truly love you and worthily praise your holy name. Through our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Merciful God, we have sinned in what we have thought and said, in the wrong we have done, and in the good we have not done. We have sinned in ignorance, we have sinned in weakness, we have sinned through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorrow. We repent and turn to you. Forgive us for our Saviour Christ's sake, and renew our lives to the glory of your name. Amen. Through the cross of Christ, God have mercy on us. Pardon us and set us free. Know that we are forgiven and be at peace. God strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Amen. Our sentence for today Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your kingdom comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, a foal of a donkey. Our collect of the day, Christ who reigns, you care for the least among us. Give us courage to enact your gospel in all the world, that all people may see your glory. For you are alive and reign with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. First reading is from Jeremiah 23, 1-6. Woe to the shepherds who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pasture, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to the shepherds who tend my people. Because you have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not bestowed care on them, I will bestow punishment on you for the evil you have done, declares the Lord. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them and will bring them back to their pasture where they will be fruitful and increase in number. I will place shepherds over them who will tend them, and they will no longer be afraid or terrified, nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. 
In his days, Judea will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he called the Lord, our righteous Saviour. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. We shall now read Psalm uh, Luke 1, 68 to 79. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has come to his people and redeemed them. He has raised up a horn of salvation. <clears throat> salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father, to our father Abraham. Rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear of an holiness and unrighteousness before him in all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him, to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins, of the tender mercy of our God, by which the raising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our second reading this morning comes from Colossians 1, verses 11 to 20 being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy kingdom, of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation, for in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together, and he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Good morning all. Today's Gospel reading is from Luke chapter 23, verses 33 to 43. Now, um, just before I read it, I want to explain something. When I read the last sentence of this reading, I read it as if the last comma is in a different position. Okay? Right. When they came to the place called the Skull, there they crucified him, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing and they divided up his clothes by casting lots. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. 
They said, he saved others, let him save himself if he is the Christ of God, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, if you are the king of Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you are under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we are getting what we, our de deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth today. You will become, you will be with me in paradise. This is the gospel of Christ. We praise you. We glorify your name this morning, God, giving thanks for the sanctity of your word. Amen. Well, firstly, I will be 55 tomorrow. It's interesting how as you age, you look at birthdays differently. Uh, for me, I say I've now outlived my father by three years. Right throughout my family life, my birthdays have always been celebrated with fancy cakes, chocolate, strawberry tort, you name it. No one actually asked me what I preferred, so I want to acknowledge whoever made that cake this morning that you hit the nail on the head. Banana, no icing. Three days ago, my brother was admitted to hospital for an urgent operation. In the midst of that operation, he had a cardiac episode, so they had to induce him into a coma and slowly bring him out. Yesterday, as a family, we met and heard from the doctors who said that if we don't operate again, uh, he will die. And if we do operate, there is a 50-50 chance that he will survive. He has currently been in theater for 55 minutes. Those odds aren't great. But this morning's gospel, the odds of Jesus dying were worse. It was a hundred percent guaranteed that he would die. It's just that no one knew about it. In the midst of Jesus' focus on the cross, the people, the Jewish leaders, the high priests, the elders, were intensely protecting their territory, their financial gains, everything that was important to them. And so they said whatever needed to be said. And in our gospel, we heard them reporting to Pilate and to Caesar that this man was subverting our nation. He opposed payment of taxes to Caesar. And worse, he called himself the Messiah, a king in opposition to the king. These people were speaking from a position of protecting what was more important to them. Therefore, they were willing to speak even when it wasn't truth. Yes, there was a discussion about payment to Caesar, but that's not what it was. 
Yes, there was a conversation about whether or not he was the Messiah or a king, but that's not what he meant. In fact, Jesus answers these comments by saying, you say, I am. Then he's placed on the cross at Calvary between two men also condemned to be killed. The Soldiers are casting lots for his clothing. They're offering him sour wine. They are essentially mocking him because they've now got the upper hand on everything that was important to them was now protected. They had got rid of and affected and hurt the person who was the most challenged to everything they held dear. But that's not why Jesus was there. And therefore, that's not, that is the reason why he did not engage. You see, Jesus always knew that he was heading to the cross to die. Jesus knew that he could have got down off that cross and dealt with all the issues that were before these people. But he knew there was only one way to truly resolve these matters. And that was for him to change the covenant around sin and therefore around salvation. He died on that cross and the one thief who recognized who he was said, Jesus Please remember me when you come into your kingdom. No matter what our challenges, no matter what our mountains, no matter what the argument, no matter what the defense, no matter what the manipulation, no matter about anything, Jesus is interested in one thing, one thing for us, and that is that we would come into his presence, and that he says that he, so that he, we can come into his kingdom. This morning as we consider this gospel, what's most important to God is not the stuff that's going on. God dealt with that when he died on the cross. All that God wants from us this morning is to be able to turn to him and say, God, please remember me when you come into your kingdom. Or in other words, in the life of that thief, he knew that he was condemned for all that he had done wrong. But he recognized what was most important. That was to come before the king of kings and say, God, please remember me when you come into your kingdom. It's there where hope lies. It's there where healing takes place. It's there where God sorts all the issues of our hearts. It's there where we know the love and the promise and therefore the death of Christ. He didn't just die. He suffered. He took all that was thrown at him because it was irrelevant. He came to die, simply to die, so that we might live. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear when we pray in the name of your Son. Therefore, in confidence and trust, we pray for the church. We pray for one another.
We give you thanks, Holy Father, for the communion of Christians here in Thames. We ask for your blessing. We ask you to give us courage and strength to share your gospel, your word, amongst our community. We give you thanks, Holy Father, for the lessons we've learned today. That the thief on the cross showed us that we are to be forgiven. That is why Jesus was there. And it doesn't matter what we do, or who we are, but we are entitled to your salvation. We give you praise and glory and thanks for that. We give you thanks for the volunteers in this church that keep it going. We give you thanks for our musicians, how they lead us in joy to lift our hearts to you in song. We give you thanks for Vestry and all the work that they do, all the pressures they've taken on their shoulders on our behalf. So, Father, enliven the church for its mission, that we may be salt of the earth and a light to the world. Breathe fresh life into your people. Give us power to reveal Christ in word and action. And we pray for the world. There's so much to mention to you, Holy Father, but you know, you know the situation far better than we do. You know it purely, without spin and misinformation. So, Father, creator of all, Lead us and every people into ways of justice and peace, that we may respect one another in freedom and truth. And awaken in us a sense of wonder for the earth and all that is in it. Teach us to care creatively for its resources. And we pray for our community for all our service people, police, fire, ambulance, doctors, nurses, orderlies, teachers, psychiatrists, psychologists, and all the volunteers who keep the place going. All those service, in, uh, service people, people who help with budgets, um, citizens' advice. The, end, the list is endless, and we praise you for the, the goodness in working for the community. We praise you for the recipients of our Monday meals and ask your blessing upon them, Lord. And we pray for those who have attended the Selwyn Center over the last years, and for the ladies who have led the Selwyn Center group. As it goes into recession, we ask you to bless them, and that your will be done as to whether it starts it up again. 
So God of truth, inspire with your wisdom those whose decisions affect the lives of others, that all may act with integrity and courage. Give grace to all whose lives are linked with ours. May we serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. And we pray for those in need. We pray particularly for Jill for Toko and Ellen, for Diane and Ian, for Claire Twentyman, I pray for my grandchildren, for friends, Rowan, Gavin, and Alfred. Yes, Lord. For Brendan's brother and his family as they worry about his health. God of hope, comfort and restore all who suffer in body, mind or spirit. May they know the power of your healing love. Make us willing agents of your compassion. Strengthen us as we share in making people whole. And we remember those who have died and those who mourn. And that particularly at this time, we remember the families of Margaret Williamson, Judith Martin, Marilyn Ritchie, we remember with thanksgiving those who have died in the faith of Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Father, into your hands we commend them. Give comfort to those who mourn, bring them peace in their time of loss. We praise you for all your saints who have entered your eternal glory. May the example inspire and encourage us. And Holy Father, there's a young couple who wish to be married in, Fe in February, Bridie and Frank. And so we hold them up to you, Holy Father, and praise you for encouraging these two young people to marry and ask you that their marriage may be blessed and that it may last forever. It is an institution seldom entered into these days. So we ask especially for this one. We pray for ourselves and our own ministries. Lord, you have called us to serve you. Grant that we may walk in your presence, your love in our hearts, your truth in our minds your strength in our wills, until at the end of our journey we know the joy of our homecoming and the welcome of your embrace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.